the great the great the great Jim Brandstatter story with Bo Schembeck on my playing days uh, was my sophomore year. We had played Missouri the weekend before, and we had gotten a punt blocked. And a Bo Schembechler team does not get a punt blocked. Even if you get a punt blocked, you do not get a punt blocked. It is the cardinal sin. It means you are the dogs of the earth, and he will make you pay in the following practice. So after that game, which we lost, we're out there on Tuesday in the stadium because the artificial practice field had not been planted yet over by Old Ferry Field. We didn't even have Schembechler Hall then. So the starting right tackle, Dan Durdorf, had hurt his hip, and I was the backup. So I was running in practice on Tuesday with the first team. He was mad about getting a punt block. So when we went to our period of time during practice, we were practicing special teams, he went over to the defensive side of the ball, and he told the guys who were rushing the punter, anybody gets in and blocks this punt, I'll buy him a milkshake. He wanted them to give a great effort. So we're lined up in the huddle, and we know that we can't screw this up, because if we get another punt blocked, there will be hell to play. Hell to pay. So we line up in our stance. I jab out. I get the guy that I'm supposed to block, knock him off balance, and then I continue on down the field to cover the punt. And usually what you do is you look up and locate the ball, and then you go to where the ball's going to be and break down on the receiver and tackle him. Well, I looked up, and there was no ball. Now, in the empty stadium, you know, there's echoes going on, and all I heard from behind me was... You dumb son of a bitch! And I said, oh man, somebody's in big trouble. So I figure I want to get out of the way because he's on the war path now. So I peel around and head back to the line of scrimmage in the huddle. And I see him out of the corner of my eye running at full tilt. His hat's askew, he's got the papers in his hand. He is hot, he is mad, and I pity the poor bastard that got on the wrong side of him. So I'm running, and he's changing course. And he is running right at me. Now, I didn't do anything wrong. I said, got it. And I looked around, there was nobody behind me. Now, now I'm sitting there going, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. And I went through, like your life passes in front of your eyes, and I did everything right in that play. And it took me probably a millisecond to get that through my head to process it. And about that time, he was about three, four feet from me, and he left his feet. <laughs> and, he, and he just he put a, a big elbow right into my chest and knocked me back about two yards, screaming at the top of his lungs. And everybody at practice was stopped. It was just him and me. And he was getting the better of it. And just calling me every name in the book, the worst tackle in the history of intercollegiate football. We wasted a scholarship on you. You will never play a down at the University of Michigan. Get out of here. I never want to see you again. Now, I'm a 19-year-old sophomore, and I started to hyperventilate. <laughs> if Dr. Eagle were there, he would have literally got the paddles out and said, we're going to need the paddles. The lad's going to stop. So I turn around, crying, hyperventilating, and walking out the stadium. In my mind, I was going to have to call my parents and said, they pulled my scholarship, I'm out of here, uh, I'm going to a junior college somewhere in Idaho. While Jerry Hanlon runs up next to me, he says, don't go, don't leave, don't worry. I said, what do you mean, don't worry, just kick me out of practice. He'll get over it, he'll get over it. I said, what are you talking about? He said, it wasn't your fault. And I looked at him, I said, I know it wasn't my fault, I, I thought that. You know it wasn't my fault? And he said, yes. And I said, well, why don't you tell him that? And he says, well, you can't do that right now, but come on back and we'll finish practice. So all that practice, I am literally hyperventilating throughout the practice. I won't look at him. He won't look at me. And finally, on Thursday, two and a half days later, we're at training table, and we're, I'm walking through the line getting my dinner, and he walks up behind me and he goes, you still don't think that was your fault, do you? <laughs> And I told him, I know it wasn't. And he said, now, maybe it wasn't totally your fault, 
but you got to take a smaller step outside because you left too big a gap on the inside so that guy could get through there. You got it? And I looked at him and I said, you know, that's about as close as I'm ever going to get to an apology. So that was how my sophomore year, year went with Bo three games into the season.